My name is Paul Totterdale from Cotswold Seeds. For many years now, Cotswold Seeds has been interested in this crop called Sanfoin, which harbours many benefits from many different perspectives for different reasons. We have become involved in the last few years with a project called the Legume Plus Project, which is funded by the EU and run from Reading University. Here, Professor Irene Muller-Harvey describes the project and just why Sanfoin is so important and can help save farmers money. The reason I believe the EU funded this project is because we need to look at alternative ways of farming in the future. Nitrogen fertilizers are becoming very expensive because uh, the oil price is going up and you need oil and energy in order to fix the nitrogen from the air and to make the fertilizer. And around the 1950s, when the nitrogen fertilizers uh, were introduced into farming, sunfire just disappeared. Um, they have been neglected because they didn't generate as reliable good yields as the uh, lucerne and white clover. But the reason is because they haven't been bred. Lucerne and white clover, good breeding programs were funded, so farmers now have got much improved varieties. But in, um, for Sunfoin, we are still stuck with the old varieties. So this is why now some of our partners, both here in the UK, NIAP, um, and in Switzerland, uh, ART are, develop, uh, are looking into ways of uh, breeding uh, new Sanfoin and birds for Treffel varieties. Legume Plus brings together a variety of researchers, academics, veterinarians and other professionals from across Europe in a number of different institutions. As Cotswold Seeds, our main objective is to offer agronomic advice from a farmer's perspective and from a practical standpoint for the development, establishment and use of Sanfoin. Professor Steve Tamsborg is from Copenhagen University and here describes his involvement and the way in which Sanfoin can benefit dairy and cattle farmers. Basically, the, the, uh, the leguminous plants are rich in, in uh, condensed tannins and we have a quite good idea that these tannins is probably the, the mode of action. They, somehow they affect the feeding capacity of the parasites or the motility of the parasites. And, or, or maybe it also enhances the immunity in the animals. And, and through this, they have a sort of antiparasitic effect. And we are looking at it particularly in, uh, in cattle, in dairy cattle mostly, but, but also some work in, in beef cattle. Within the last four or five years, we have seen problems of, of resistance, of drug resistance in uh, several nematodes or several worms uh, that, that, uh, in cattle. And in, in sheep and goats, it's, it's, everybody knows it's been widespread for the last 30 years. So, but it's, it, it's, it's coming up now in, in dairy cattle, and that is, of course, a major worry in Denmark, where we have, or my focus is entirely on, on, on cattle. Uh, so, so we are really worried, and, and we hope that some of these plants might sort of replace or be integrated with the drug use so that you can limit the amount of drug or the number you are drenching your animals. So that's one of the... Uh, one of the outcomes that we are really hoping for. Sanfoin is a French word and when translated into English actually means healthy hay. Now one of our French counterparts in the Legume Plus project, Dr Hervé Host, he works at the French National Institute for Research into Agriculture and he's been studying the effect of sanfoin on the greater environment. He's been looking particularly at the benefit for bees but also sanfoin's ability to reduce bloat in cattle. It is reducing the methane production, and, uh, which is good for the, to decrease uh, um, the gas effect, yeah, the warming gas effect. Um, also, when you, gave them, when you give to the animals um, some tannin-rich forage, nitrogen is supposed to go to the feces instead of the urine, and it's much easier and much better for the soil to be reused. And of course, there is some effect on the animal health, like uh, uh, avoiding bloating. One of the characteristics of Sanfoin is that it has quite a high condensed tannin content. And it's these tannins which are thought to have the beneficial effects that we're investigating. There are many plants which contain tannins, and one of them is called willow herb. 
And Professor Salminen from Turku in Finland has been investigating the benefit of the elagi tannins found in willow herb and comparing it to that of the condensed tannins found in sanfoin. In Finland, let's say 200 years ago, traditionally, willow herb was used by farmers uh, to increase milk yields of ruminants. So that's one, one reason. So it's known to be non-toxic, healthy and increases milk yields. No one knows why. It doesn't contain any condensed tannins, but we have found that it is very high in its level of elagitannins. And one of the reasons for studying elagitannins now is that uh, willow herb contains the most complex elagitannins found in any plants by anyone. Another important subject is the impact that sanfoin and other similar crops have on the food chain. And more specifically, in the Legume Plus project, Dr. Giuseppe B from Switzerland is looking at the impact that using sanfoin has on meat and milk quality. There is some indication that these tannins might have an effect on those microbes which are hydrogenating these fatty acids in the rumen. And uh, by feeding these tannins, these, these uh, uh, by, um, microorganisms are or their activities uh, reduced and therefore we can increase the amount of polyunsaturated fatty acid in the milk. The Legging Plus project is ongoing and by 2015, at the project's completion, we hope to have a lot more information and be able to share that with the wider agricultural community. The information will be made available on legumeplus.eu and on the website you will find a lot of other general information about Sanfoin and the project itself.